To make the first ever AFLW Grand Final was um, unexpected by all around us. Um, you know, at the first night of pre-season, we sat down and said, what's our goal? And it was to make the first ever Grand Final. What's our business or purpose for this year? Now, absolutely number one this year when we start a new club, we want to do this. We actually want to try and set ourselves up to win the first player. Uh, we are preparing ourselves every time we go out and train, every time we have a practice game, every time we meet. That's our ultimate goal for this year and it should be our thing. It's something that not many people get to do. Not many people get to say they're even a part of a grand final, let alone the first ever women's grand final. With the grand final coming up on Saturday, it's coming closer and I'm getting a little bit more nervous, but I'm more excited than anything else. Uh, one of my favourite sayings is the only difference between nerves and excitement is a deep breath. So it's important to make sure that we um, keep grounded and, and focused um, whilst also enjoying the week and Media Street and everything that goes along with a grand final. So I've never been in a grand final with such high stakes. So it's something that we can make the supporters and the club so proud by bringing home the flag and the cup. So I hope we can manage to do it. It's why you play footy. In the end, you want to win a premiership with the teammates and, and who become your best mates. And yeah, we're here now and we're, we can't be more ready for Saturday. To have an opportunity to play in the grand final, especially in the first year, um, we, we'll go down in history either way if we win or lose. But um, yeah, it's, it's probably going to be the best day of our lives regardless. Yeah, so coming into the grand final week, it was unusual that we'd just come off a Sunday game and we're preparing for a Saturday, but Adelaide were in the same boat also, so it was a, a six-day turnaround for both of us, so a really rushed week. Uh, the Monday in Brisbane was um, even more, um, um, what's the word, um, a lot more distractions on that Monday because of the fact that the venue hadn't been tied up yet. The AFLW Grand Final won't be at the Gabba. The ground ruled unfit for the purposes of the game on Saturday. So it's been relocated to the Gold Coast to be played before the men's encounter and this is the source of major chagrin. We're bitterly disappointed we're not here. We think, you know, we, we would have liked to have been here. As I said, we're really disappointed that you know, grass was sown knowing that there was a football season coming up and it's you know, hindered what's happening here. It's not an outcome that I don't think any of us could contemplate. And now we've got to focus on Metricon, making that the, the right celebration for what's been an incredible opening season of AFLW and, and make it work and get a lot of people there and get all Queenslanders behind their team. Let's get a silver lining out of this and, and take into the game that we've got some familiarity with the ground and its surroundings and it feels like home. That was the decision. This is what was going to happen. No more talk about it. We've got training on Wednesday. Let's go. Grand final week um, was obviously a very special week. Um, there was a lot of media, a lot of talk throughout the week, who's going to win. I think it was a bit of a struggle to sort of, you know, focus on um, just the game, but in the end that's what Craig really helped us to do at training. It was just, just like normal, we didn't do anything different, which has really helped our minds. Facing that way. We had Alan Christensen come to us at the start of the week in our, in our team review from the Carlton game and had some really good advice about his previous experience and he just basically said enjoy the week and you don't have to do anything differently so uh, in terms of your preparation and, you, and in a football sense so I think that we, we did that. Um, our training was um, really good, there was, there, was, there was a buzz about the place, there was lots of energy, we still had plenty to work on so we had a really good night on Wednesday. The one thing I'd bang on about is that you must train well, you must train well and I reckon that gives you clarity. If you, if you think about the stuff you forget to train well and, and you forget about what you're doing so I just kept reminding him that you had to hold that standard of training um, and mate just keep your weeks normal. You know, 
we won one game, then we won two, we won three, and you know the girls were probably just more excited than anything. They were, they were so excited to get to training, they were so excited to play the next game. So all that other noise outside of the footy world, I don't think the girls took too much notice of it. It just sort of, we had a good system up here. They bought into it, and you know we just kept on focusing on the next week and the next week and the next week, and it, it worked. I think the only point that the media and um, onlookers thought that we were actually going to be able to be um, grand finalists was grand final week. <laughs> I still don't think until we got to the grand final that anyone thought we were still going to go. Every time, every game was sort of like an upset or you know we weren't the favourite. You know really wasn't until we secured that home grand final that people were like oh okay Brisbane are really good. Um, so it took nearly, nearly the whole seven weeks um, for people to, to sort of give us the respect I thought we really deserved. It's a week I'll never forget really because you were just working towards you know the biggest game you've ever played in in your life so um, I think I just treasured every training session knowing that that was going to be our last for the year. When you rewound to middle of pre-season when, when we were winning the wooden spoon according to everybody else to have gone through undefeated um, made the grand final, finished minor premiers. Um, I still think though the group and all of us, that wasn't enough, but we were there to win it. Some people may go into a grand final thinking, I'm a bit nervous, I don't know where I'm gonna fit in and I don't know what opportunity is gonna happen. I don't know if I'm gonna take those opportunities. I think knowing it was the first one, everyone knew that they had to give it all. Just because you don't wanna leave that ground thinking, that's a history-making history game and you could have done something else. So being the first one, you're just happy to be there and, and soak it in regardless of the win or the loss in that moment. You're just happy to be a part of history. Well, Winston Churchill once famously said, history will be kind to me for I intend to write it. And that's exactly what the Brisbane Lions and the Adelaide Crows intend to do this afternoon as they look to secure a one-off piece of history that can never be repeated. The first ever AFLW Premiership Cup. Hi everybody, welcome to Metricon Stadium on the Gold Coast for the 2017 AFLW Grand Final. Well Chelsea, it's been a remarkable and whirlwind couple of months. How are you feeling with all this? Oh, it's just unbelievable. It really is a dream come true for many of us. And to be standing here today and going out playing a Grand Final is obviously very exciting. What are the keys to winning? You know, hard physical footy, um, everyone needs to put their body on the line today and, you know, I think if we can move the ball in, in the way that we want to move it, um, out in the wings, get it in there fast, I think that's going to be the key. I've played in a few grand finals before, but this was something different. It was the most nervous I've ever been. Um, I just I obviously didn't want to show the nerves. Everyone's nervous, even though they're saying they're not nervous, everyone's nervous, everyone is just really happy to be there, so proud to be there and to wear that jumper on the day. This was it and this is probably yeah the last time that we'd all play together as a group and everything we'd been working so hard um, on throughout the whole entire season, you know, it came down to this moment. Um, it was a moment that we had to, had to win and we had to put everything on the line. Uh, we had to play our hardest, our smartest um, and yeah, beat Adelaide. Our final message was around uh, playing the game of footy and not playing the occasion, if you like. So just hone in on what you need to do, what your role is, play your role, share in the load was a big theme for us throughout the whole year. Do something that inspires a teammate. The energy levels were really good and, and everyone was just so ready and there was a saying that we had was there was an arm wrestle and there was always going to be an arm wrestle and, and we needed to be the one that to slam it down at the end of the game and we always did it. Every time we were behind we always managed a way to get, behind, um, get in front and um, it just reminded me that our team never, never gave up any time we were down whether it be 10 points, 20 points, we'd always come back so yeah, it was just going to be a huge game for us and I think, yeah, the girls were ready and we were just so focused on what we had to do. Alrighty, been quite a journey, hasn't it? Five months, a lot of hard toil. Today, who's going to be the first person out there to wear that badge of honour of putting your body on the line, you know, doing something, your moment when it comes along? Who's going to backpack into the, into the pack? Who's going to put their head over the ball? Where's Jamie? 
first game of the season, last game of the season, all those really inspirational, courageous, selfless things are going to be vital today and you can't, cannot underestimate the inspiration that will give to the other 21 players and all of us. It will absolutely take you to another level. This group here has had an amazing ability to trust each other, work for each other, it's uh, egoless, but to work together, trust each other, absolutely work your backside off for each other and, and hang in games, this is, uh, this is something that's unique to this group. Look at each other in the eye, you trust your teammates, you trust what you're going to go out there to do today. Rightio, let's go and do it. When you're standing in the race, you're thinking you're about to start one of the biggest games of your life. You're thinking all these things going through your mind like if I get the opportunity to kick a goal, am I going to kick a goal? Am I going to fall under the pressure? Am I not? Am I going to exceed the expectations? Am I not? You hear the people yelling, you can't even hear yourself think and you just think this is a once in a lifetime opportunity and all you can do is just run out there and just get going because once you run back through that race, it's over. So it's, it's, a, it's a real moment because it's the start of an end and um, yeah, being in that race and just hearing everyone, it was like being in a cauldron and then obviously running out onto that white line was one of the best experiences. And here come the team. Wins in a draw, an undefeated season, through to the grand final. You know, you actually did dream of things, you know, you see the men holding up the cup at the end of the day and you always want to dream of doing that and today you, you, felt, you felt you could actually do it and um, it wasn't like 100,000 at the MCG but it was, it felt like that, it honestly sounded mass, it sounded like there was 50,000 there, not 15, so yeah, it was, it was a pretty awesome feeling running out there with, um, with the 22 girls behind me and um, yeah, it was a really great moment. It was packed, it was the biggest crowd I've ever played in front of and maybe ever will again. Just seeing tears of people, all pretty much all in Brisbane Lions jerseys and in women's jerseys as well, like there to support us. I felt really proud in that moment and I wasn't thinking about the game in the couple of minutes that we sang the national anthem, I was just taking it all in and feeling what it felt to be out there because there was only me and 21 other girls that got to do that wearing a Brisbane Lions jersey. And it's something that will never happen again with that group of girls on that day. And yeah, it was, it was pretty emotional and, but all good emotions really. It was just taking it all in and just, yeah, being there. We had to run out and we had the national anthem, we ran to the banner, there was all these things that were happening and then it finally came to game time and we set up in our positions and I remember the girl on me that ran straight at me and bumped me and I thought, oh, okay, here we go. The time has come for the Brisbane Lions and the Adelaide Crows. Welcome to the 2017 AFLW Grand Final, the first of a new era. Cramey, she bounces it inside 50. Gibson works hard to get there ahead of Virgo. Gibson gathers 40 metres out for the dream starts. Wow. Couldn't ask for a better start than that from the Crows. The goal, I remember you know, turning to the assistant coaches thinking, God, is this going to be one of those days where the opposition can't do a thing wrong? The kick falls fortuitously, and here is an opportunity now for the Lions. Jess Bushnell, we saw her kick a couple against Fremantle. Comes around on the left, and she nails it. So the Lions are on the board, we're all square. And it's a three on three, brilliant defensive mark at the front, taken by Conan. Knock on from Cox, Ash Moore was good. She's got speed too. There she goes, she's gonna back us up against Cox, she gathers, good little kick. Late contact on Sabrina frederick Traub, and Jess Wushner will have the kick. But Wushner can open up the goal face. She goes with the left foot banana, and she slots it through. Brisbane get their second. Brown in best position. Once again, Brisbane is so good at getting numbers back. Adelaide needing to adjust their entries towards 50 at the moment because they're kicking straight into a wall of Brisbane defenders. She's brought the kick. Not enough on it. Great save by 
Nick Hildebrand. This is Brittany Gibson towards the wing. Frederick Troy, critical mark. Tetra is wide open. A wide open forward 50. Goodman will come from the right, but if she gathers, she can run to 30 metres. Step inside Goodman. Gets run down. Brilliant tackle from Lutkins. Well, what a sensational effort from Kate Lutkins then. Came from about 50 metres away to lay that goal-saving tackle. That really did lift us. It did, I felt like it changed um, our way against the ball. Like she. She just saved the game for us at that stage and I just remember that one distinctly um, and I know how nuts the crowd went at that. That was one of the yeah tackles to be remembered. So the Crows dominating the scoring in that second term but they kick six behinds to Brisbane's one goal one. Lutzi, that's a moment. That's yeah. a massive yeah. moment. And so they look like they were out and off to the races then all of a sudden these two maroon jumpers appear. So that's absolutely, could be a turning point in the game. At half time I remember our message being sticking at the task, not everything's gone well today, but there might be an occasion in the second half where you can stand up and make an impact and really change things. So it was about sticking at the task and concentrating on the opportunities that might present in the second half. We were still uh, at that point close enough in striking range to to really uh, steal the game. Keeping control of the footy, just nice and composed down back. Mids getting back to help out the defence. The times have done it, it's looked okay. All right, who's going to inspire the group now? Who's it going to be in this group here? Who's it going to be? Who's it going to be out of this group? Let's go. Virgo will pop it up. Here comes Harris. Spirals one deep towards the square. It's bouncing goal and Kessler will get there just. Good strong mark there by Campbell. The Lions looked alive and they looked a real chance, so they need the, an early one here. Hatchar, good hands to Cox. Bates runs her down and gone. Third term, premiership on the line. Riley's in there, kick comes quickly from Bates. Frederick Traw puts out a one hand. A quick kick, she's down it. Frederick Traw gets a goal. She enjoyed that one, Frederick Traw, and so she should. And suddenly, the Lions are within seven points of the Crows. And Conan, Phillips stayed back, did the Bradbury and kicked the goal! We've got 15 minutes to go here and we're two kicks out of the contest. This last quarter of footy defines our year. This is the last chance we've got. Good run down from behind by McCarthy. She's the wrong girl to take on. The off the side of her boot and straight to Ashmore. And this is a better angle for Caitlin. She wants to improve it. She floats it to Harris and Taylor grabs it. And could this be Taylor Harris's moment? Bring the lines within a kick, off a step, she puts it through, 15 seconds, here's Frederick Troll, couldn't quite, Crows win, the Adelaide Crows are the first AFLW Premiers and the admiration of a nation indeed. I sort of felt sick a bit to work that hard and to talk about it so much and to have that belief and then for it to be taken away and we didn't win and you know we weren't going to be the ones that everyone was talking about it was yeah really devastating everything just crumbles down because you feel like you've just put everything into not just that game but the whole season we certainly hadn't spoken about losing the grand final all week. Not that we'd spoken about winning it, but you know, you do everything in your power to, to win it. So all your focus is sort of on that result. And um, a few seconds after the siren, it was probably just complete despair. It's just um, the realization that there's some people around you jumping around and screaming and in just complete elation and they're not your teammates. And that was pretty devastating to see to feel what we were feeling and also to see our teammates so devastated, that was pretty gut-wrenching for me. So um, it still burns, it still hurts. Um, but yeah, the, the Crows played better than us that day, so I think they deserve to win. I often look at other teams and the way they react when they win or lose, and I respect the fact that Sarah Perkins actually came up and shook my hand in the middle of all of their celebrations and said, head up, like, good job and all this, which I really respected and I think she's a great person for. You know, it would have been a significant and great moment for the football club. It still was. We got to a grand final. It's a huge achievement for these girls. Um, a massive ride, you know, a great ride throughout the whole year. Um, but, the, yeah, I think it's just that hollow feeling, that gutted feeling is that, well, well, this close, you know, it just, you know, we played such a good season and we fell short by one goal. You know, full of admiration for Adelaide. They're 
There's been nothing between our two teams this year. We won a close one, they won a close one. Their close one happened to be the grand final. So, yeah, no, no great uh, um, honour lost on our behalf. You know, we really wanted to bring kind of that, that pride to the club that, that we were a team that they could be proud of. And, you know, I, I had to go over to Emma and look her in the eye and say, you can't cry right now. You've got to be strong. You've got a speech to make. You need to thank the sponsors. You need to thank the crowd. You know, you'll be able to cry later, but right now it's, you know, you've, you're captain face. Congratulations to Beck, Erin and Chelsea and all the Crows girls. You girls have been the team to beat all year and um, you've proved yourselves today, so congratulations. Um, I wanted to also thank our club's sponsors, Hyundai, um, Oz Traffic, Epic Pharmacy and Bond University. We wouldn't be able to pull on this kit without you guys. And um, lastly, to, to Craig, the coaching staff, and to my girls. Um, you guys are, I'm so proud of you guys, and um, we'll be back bigger and stronger next year. And lastly, thank you to every single one of you that have come today. It means the world to us. Thank you. So she did really well to get up there and, and say the speech that she had to say and, and be the leader that, that she had to be and, and you know and tremendous leader that she is. To have the support from the Lions membership, the staff, the men's team, everyone to it, everyone a part of it was awesome. It was surreal. I can't even put words to it because when you're part of something this big to know that you're the little sister and you're very new, to have that support, it gives you so much confidence. To be honest, I think that was the main reason to why we did so well, is because we had people that supported us and, and we knew that as long as we gave it our best, people were gonna back us. It, it was certainly uh, something you never forget when that, you know, they kicked a goal or the, the roar of that crowd for the Brisbane Lions was, you know, um, that I suppose something we've waited a long time to hear in women's football, that you know, that many people cared about what we were doing. So these girls got to live out their dream and, and that was our job to, to help them do that. So you should be enormously proud. You've represented the club beautifully. Um, I'm sure Swanee and, and Bob would agree that you've been absolutely, you know, tremendous in terms of what you brought to the footy club. You know, there were some amazing acts of courage and bravery that happened in that game and girls kind of made their name for themselves in that grand final with what they did. So I think it's just the first stepping stone for us as a team and a club, and that we'll get our chance again to, to win one. I just wanted to say uh, thank you to, I'm probably get a bit emotional, thank you to all you girls and the whole club, just for everything that you've done. Like, the only person I knew coming here was Kashi, and I've never felt more welcome in any team as I do this one. And I just want to thank you for Every, every, every single person. He's just made us feel so welcome. And I'm so proud to be a lion. Looking back on our whole season, I think it was the highlight of all of our lives. Uh, it was definitely the highlight of my life. The sacrifices that we made were significant in order to achieve greatness and I think that we left no stone unturned in doing so. We had 27 people that contributed everything they had, so, and the highs were definitely higher than the lows. So considering the whole season, I think it was, you know, a nine out of 10. <laughs> it was successful in the end. It was really, really successful. I think beyond what the AFL had even thought or even expected um, when they had designed it and put a lot of effort into it. Um, and obviously from a club perspective, it was a really successful season for the for the women of the Brisbane Lions and looking back on it it's really really special to have been involved with that. No one would have thought that we would have been in the grand final let alone finished on top of the ladder minor premiers so when yeah when you look back at it it's an actual incredible experience and incredible achievement by us and the club um, to get to where we were and we put AFL on the map again for for Queensland at that stage and you know the rate of participation for women's football now in Queensland has gone through the roof so you know we've we've ticked a few boxes and we've helped the sport grow in Queensland and um, to get girls interested and go little girls go oh I want to play AFL now um, was 
a pretty big accomplishment for us. So that's a really good feeling. My favourite part about this whole experience was, um, apart from being able to be with such a good group of people and players, uh, after the games and during the week and on social media, there was a lot of kids um, or little girls that would often reach out and say that uh, we were able to inspire them and they hope to play in the future in the AFLW. So I think being able to be role models for them was my favourite part of it all. I think these girls have, have turned heads, they've turned many heads. Um, you know, we no one knew what to expect and a lot of these girls, you know, in some respects are household names already. People know who they are. Um, yeah, they've definitely inspired not only younger women but young boys. I've seen younger boys that want to go see Sabrina Frederick Traub or Kate McCarthy play the game or Emily Bates. They want to go watch these girls. The, the, the part of our ground that people were really talking about was our back six, um, led by Sam Virgo and Leah Kasler down there as part of our leadership group. But um, those two in particular, marshalling the troops around them, Kate Luckins, Shannon Campbell, Nick Hildebrand, um, Talia Randall, um, that was the, <laughs> the team within the team that did a particularly good job. To watch players grow into their kind of reputation like Emily Bates, you know, she'd always been good, but God, she was, you know, that good now. And people um, got to see all these, the brilliant things that she could do. What a superstar Bates has been every week getting better and better. She just continues to rise and her composure and her, her maturity as an athlete and her leadership is just outstanding. And people uh, like Jess Wushner, you know, I was really happy for jo Jess particularly in some big games, you know, she just took it upon herself to win us the game and I mean that was, you know, pretty awesome. Shani Webb, you know, just getting every ounce out of her body as an undersized ruck, you know, she's not much taller than me and we're putting her in there against these giants and you know she just had the heart of a lion and, and played that way the whole seasons. Can't wait to do it again um, and can't wait to see these girls you know just get bigger, better, stronger and for the whole competition to evolve. I think it's a, a wonderful time in women's sport. So we had a lot of fun, a um, lot of laughs and yeah I think uh, we'll always remember that first season um, in a special place. I'm so proud of our group, I'm so proud on grand final day what how we were resilient and how we never gave up and I'm so proud of our attention to detail and our our work ethic um, I'm proud that we we're, were able to get the whole of Queensland to come along our journey with us and I think that was down to the way we played our game and the way that we carried ourselves so in that sense I don't think we could have done any better I think that we we set the bar high and we achieved some great, great things, um, regardless of the end result. I've learnt so much about myself, um, about my game, how can I can improve it, as well as making 26 best friends that sadly um, we won't see every day anymore. So, yeah, it's been an amazing journey and I'm so sad that it's over, but obviously, hopefully it can just keep going for future years and we can still make history together and, um, this league has given us so many opportunities so I'm so grateful to be a part of it. It's been one of the most rewarding things I've ever done and um, I couldn't have asked for a better team to lead honestly they are the best um, bunch of girls I've ever played with and it's the the team that I've loved the most and um, yeah it's just been so rewarding and I just I honestly can't wait till November and hopefully it um, kicks off and, and everyone can come together as well and, and um, you know, have another successful season. Yeah, I mean.